O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to you, O Israel. O come, strong branch of Jesse free, your own from Satan's tyranny. From depths of hell your people save, and give them victory o'er the grave. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice Emmanuel, Emmanuel shall, shall come, come to you, you O Israel. O come, blessed day spring, come and cheer our spirits by your advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice Emmanuel, Emmanuel shall come, come to you, O Israel. O come, O King of David, come, and open wide O heaven's home. Make safe the way that leads on high, and close the path to misery. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice Emmanuel, Emmanuel shall come, come to you, you O Israel. Israel. Good evening, and welcome to Holy Cross as we celebrate the Lord's Nativity on this Christmas Eve night. We will have service again tomorrow morning at 10.30 for Christmas Day, and we will gather for the first Sunday of Christmas at an 8.30 service in person. It will also be available online at 9.30. We ask that you continue to pray for all those who have been impacted by the coronavirus pandemic, those who work and watch this night to keep us safe and to uh, make sure that God's grace is known and God's peace is felt in this night. We begin as we live in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to join in the singing of our gathering hymn, number 69, I Am So Glad Each Christmas Eve. It is uh, printed on page 4 in your bulletin. The service continues with the prayer of the day. It is printed on page two in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. 
through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineages of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. The Gospel of the Lord. We'll join together in singing O Little Town of Bethlehem. It's printed on page five in your bulletin. reading from Luke chapter 2 verses 8 through 14 and in the same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night and an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear and the angel said to them fear not 
For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. A reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 15 through 20. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. 
and all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll join together in singing our hymn of the day, number 71. It's printed on page 7 in your bulletin, Angels We Have Heard on High. In the name of Jesus, amen. As you peer into the stable, who do you see? You'll see a man who knows the tremendous weight of responsibility. He wants nothing more than to provide for his wife and to protect the Holy Child. But now forced to shut down his carpentry business to comply with a worldwide census. He's made his way to his hometown, where no one has even an extra room. And while they were there, the time came for his fiancée to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in an inn. Yes, his pride was wounded, but at least they're in, out of the cold. As you peer into the stable, who do you see? You'll see a young girl who has likely endured the shame and the ridicule of an entire community. Yeah, sure, the Holy Spirit, they said mocking the messenger from heaven.
But now in this new place, and with a fresh start, she lies in the hay exhausted, highly aware of every noise, every grunt, and every breath that this newborn makes. She's never been a mother before, but somehow she knows that he'll be okay. Although he is her firstborn one, she knows he's also God's own son. As you peer into the stable, who do you see? While there are no angels there, a group of shepherds have come from the Judean countryside to see this thing that has happened, which the Lord had made known to them. And when they saw the Holy Family, they made known the saying which had been told them concerning this child. They told how angels from the realms of glory now proclaimed Messiah's birth. And there he was, right before their eyes. And yes, when you peer into the stable, you will see him, the little Lord Jesus, asleep on the hay. He is what tonight is all about. He is what all of life and salvation and the good news and Christian witness are all about. This is the one foretold by prophets and proclaimed by angel choirs. And somehow in a mystery that could only be orchestrated by the Lord Adonai, God now dwells among humankind. God has taken on our human flesh, and in this child, God and sinners are truly reconciled. What the angels said is true. Christ the Lord was born for you. But still there are others who have come to this stable, Countless Christmas tunes have imagined others arriving to worship Jesus. The friendly beasts and the gifts they gave Emmanuel. Or Jeanette and Isabella bringing torch and cakes to greet the rosy-cheeked king. And who could forget the pum 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 of the little drummer boy? But it isn't them that I see. Go ahead. Look over at your manger seat. Kneel down if you need to and look in. As you peer into the stable, you see the fulfilled, familiar faces of adoring parents and shepherds filled with joy and wonder. And it's likely that somehow the Magi have come to worship him before their Epiphany feast on January 6th. But looking in, you cannot see what I can, because you cannot see yourself. But I see you, and God sees you. And what a sight you are. You are beneath life's crushing load. Your forms are bending low. Ragged and run down from a rough and tumble year. But you are called the Lord's beloved children nonetheless. Christ Jesus has made this so. Like Mary and Joseph, you've done your best to be compliant citizens and minded your P's and Q's. But your faces they are worn by the winter's chilled wind and the exhaustion of a year that seems like it will never end. There's been a constant barrage, a worldwide pandemic, the call for justice, information, and misinformation. 
we have grieved the death of loved ones in unique and strange ways. There are some who worry about where their next meal is coming from and how they'll pay the bills. While some of you have weathered the virus just fine, still others fear that it will sign their death certificate. I see you, dear friends, and God sees you too. And God is so glad that you have come near to him on this most holy night. Some years ago, I was sitting in a Bible study about the verse, suffer little children to come on to me, when I heard the Bible scholar say, the door of heaven is only three feet tall. He moved on from the point pretty quickly, and no one gave it much thought. But toward the end of the class, a tall and lanky fellow, much taller than me, he stood up and asked, Sir, I wonder if you might address the size of the door of heaven. I'd like you to go back to that. How do you expect the rest of us, pointing from his chest down to his toes, how do you expect the rest of us to get in? The teacher replied, Ah, yes. I'm glad you caught that. What was it that I said again? The door of heaven is only three feet tall. And how are you going to get in? <laughs> On your knees. This has been a difficult year, globally and locally, politically and personally. Still, whether by a census or by worldwide pandemic, you, dear friends, have arrived in Bethlehem. How wonderful that in this most difficult year, while your faith may have been tried and challenged, it continues to lead you back to its most prized possession, Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord. So come again and peer into the stable, kneel down beside the manger, Worship and pray to the newborn king. And don't be afraid to get back into this low-bent position once again all year round. For the child in the manger, once too weak even to hold up his own head, grew up to save the lost and the lonely. He is one who knows how to stoop down. He stooped down to heal the sick and forgive the sinner, to challenge the powerful and to comfort the sorrowful, to strengthen the feeble knees. And he promises to bend down once again. He promises to raise the dead. This child, born in Bethlehem, heaven's glory and our true peace, he is your Lord and Savior, tonight, tomorrow, and forever. Thanks be to God. Amen. Having heard the good news, I invite you to rise as we join together in confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We confess together. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's people according to their needs. Merciful God, full of grace and truth, we gather on this Christmas Eve to remember the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our heart's delight and heaven's greatest gift. We have heard the story, and in heart and mind we have rushed to Bethlehem and beheld the sign of him who was laid in a manger. No words adequately express our gratitude and the wonder of this night, and so we come in awe, confessing our shortcomings in love and life, our sinful disobedience. And we come in hope, mindful that this holy child brought about our redemption. On this night, we remember the needs of the whole world for peace from above, and the well-being of all who inhabit the earth. Bring forth the unity of the church, boldness in our proclamation, that our worship may be in spirit and in truth, and that our service would be to your glory and honor. We remember the poor, the helpless, the cold, the hungry, the lonely, and the oppressed. For those in need of healing in mind, body, spirit, and relationship. Be near those who are nearing life's end, and all those who mourn this night. On this holy night, we ask that you would send forth your Holy Spirit to those who do not know the Lord Jesus, or who do not love him, or who by sin have grieved the heart of love. We thank you that our voices are united with the church on earth and the host of heaven, a multitude which no one can number, whose hope has always been in you, the Word made flesh, and have united us in perfect hope and peace. These prayers and praises we bring before your heavenly throne and beg that you remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I invite you to shut off the lights in your home, to grab a candle and light them as we participate in the service of light.
we join together in the responsive dialogue. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, but the Lord will arise upon you, and thick darkness envelops the peoples, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. Let us celebrate the light of the world. Let us walk in the light as he is in the light. We have fellowship with him and with one another. The blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Many ages after God created the heavens and the earth, when God made man and woman in his image, long after the great flood, when God set the rainbow in the clouds as a sign of the coven covenant, 21 centuries from the time of Abraham and Sarah, 13 centuries after Moses led the people Israel from slavery in Egypt to freedom and the promised land, 11 centuries from the time of Ruth and the judges, a thousand years from the anointing of David as king. In the 65th week of Daniel's prophecy, takes note, in the 194th Olympiad, the 752nd year from the founding of the city of Rome, the 42nd year of the reign of Octavian Augustus, in the sixth age of the world, all earth being at peace. Jesus Christ, eternal God, Son of the Eternal Father, willing to hallow the world by his coming in mercy, was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea. Today is the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, God made flesh.
on this most holy night, receive the Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.